So, ladies and gentlemen, TVC 22 viewers of Clarence Rockland, I am here today at the Clarence Rockland Public Library for a rather interesting show that's going to dispel a lot of our impressions, at least people in my age group, about what libraries are. That applies for people in my age group. For people in the younger age groups, the ones the, tar the library is targeting, it's perhaps a completely different story because just this morning I was talking to a man who told me that his eight-year-old daughter had no idea what a library was. I imagine there are far too many of those people still around and I think that the, the staff at the Clarence Rockland Public Library are more than amply equipped to <laughs> set the record right. I am here today with Katrina Rouse, who is the CEO of the Clarence Rockland Public Library, and with Paul Davies, who is the Program Activity Director. If I got that wrong, you'll Programming set me correct. Assistant. Programming Assistant. <laughs> All right. Whatever it is, from what I've seen, you two do your jobs marvelously well. I think you've shown an, a level of enthusiasm that has translated into an incredibly vibrant building, user-friendly in every sense of the word, Definitely not what I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Kat, and welcome to your community living room. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I, I love that expression. <laughs> this is, it, this does feel like a living room. This, you've, you've, um, I can't imagine how much work it took to coordinate this and how much money, but tell me where it all started. Uh, well, actually, last year, the library celebrated 75 years of a public library here in Rockland. So it's been around for a long time, and it started in the basement of the church here in Rockland, Très Saint Trinité. So this is its 75th year last year, and it has changed so much since then. It's gone through many different phases, and I'm not solely responsible for the way it looks now, or the way it is now. We've had a remodel last year, but it was already in this space, which is absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, it's so open, and it, it doesn't feel like a library. It feels like an architectural gem. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's really different looking. You walk in, and it's impressive. And it's not a quiet tomb. People no. can talk here, no. and kids do, and they laugh, and they have fun, and they run around. Running around, maybe not encouraged all the time, but during special events, sure, mm -hmm. they have fun. Mm -hmm. And we have activities here for everybody. So it's, it's a place where people can come and enjoy their time and spend not just five minutes picking out a book and walking out the door. There's lots of things for them to do here. And your hours are pretty user-friendly, too. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Most. No, we have uh, Monday till Thursday, 9 till 8, eight. eight. and then 9 till 5 on Fridays, and Saturdays, 10 till 2, except in the summer, we are closed on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the summer, I think you have to be closed because you have to rest after the incredible lineup of activities that you have yeah, during Paul's, the week. Paul's been helping us with some of this. Paul was hired this year especially for the summer reading program, the TD summer reading program. We've TD had this, being Toronto Dominion. Toronto Dominion, correct. Mm -hmm. We've had the TD summer reading program for a while, but Paul is expanding on it. So this year it's going to be bigger and better and have a few extra bells and whistles, if yeah. you will. And kids can drop into the library for different activities throughout the week. It's not just going to be a once a week kind of thing. So we've had a lot of kids that were missing out on the fun because of sports or what have you. Mm -hmm. They can come any time during the week mm -hmm. and enjoy the summer reading program and everything that, it, that benefits from that. So it's, it's lots of fun. Now, in the summer reading program, you're exposing kids to hard copy books or also online books? Everything. Everything, everything. they can get their hands on. The idea is just yeah. to keep them reading exactly. and talking about what they read? Yeah. Studies show that if a kid is reading and learning throughout the summer as well, it's less of a learning curve when they go back to school. Oh, that certainly makes sense. Yeah. Certainly makes sense. And none of this um, speed reading, so they, they actually learn spelling as well, I suppose. <laughs> One hopes. I <laughs> hope for my son. I hope. <laughs> but uh, no, we've had um, a lot of great activities here at the library and a lot of good response. Last year we had a, a girls' night out evening. We've had, and that was for ladies in the community, and they had a great time. There was a massage therapist here. There were people talking about nutrition, and that was wonderful. We had a wine and chocolate event, and that there we had um, 
we had different dignitaries came for that as well. The, the mayor at the time, um, uh, Pierre, Pierre Lalonde? Lemieux. Pierre Lemieux, thank yes. you very much. Pierre Lemieux was here Member for that Parliament. as well. Correct, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. He's actually a very good friend of the library. He really does try to support us as well. Yeah. And um, all of our councillors really support us as well. So we're very lucky. Well, yeah. I think that this is a place that people would be happy to come to. It's a comfortable place and people are in their best behavior in a way. I mean, friendly and They're inquisitive. Happy. They're happy They're to be happy. here. Mm -hmm. They're not disappointed to be here. And we have so much to offer. We have computers they can use, mm -hmm. free Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. uh, we have e-books available now in French and English, both languages. And we have all the books, obviously. Mm -hmm. can't, can't get rid of the books, but no. we want those here. And we have magazines. There's, there's just so much. There's even audio books. There's something for everybody. Now, that's a good point that you raised. You have books in English and in French. You have Everything's bilingual. Just about equal proportion? Yes. Okay. We still have a bit more French, mm -hmm. but we've been buying quite a bit in the last two years to bring our collection up to a good standard so people can walk in here and they can find a book they want to read. And we do have modern novels and paperbacks and stuff like that too, but it's what people want to read. They have a bit of that and they have a bit of the classics. There's something of everything here. And what if people have books that they want to donate? Do you take those? Or we do. do We're do? cautious about donations, though. Um, we do have issues with sometimes people give books that are too old or moldy or, mm -hmm. or out of date, such mm -hmm. as we can't really have a map of Canada without none of it in it. Mm -hmm. You have to have that in there. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. if a book is falling apart, we really can't do anything with that. Now, we do have a book sale every year mm -hmm. at the... Boy Scouts uh, May Long Weekend mm -hmm. uh, flea market. We always have a table there, mm -hmm. and it does very well actually. And we also try to give books to Better World Books. Anything that doesn't sell at the book sale, we sell at Better World Books. Mm -hmm. well, we, sorry, we package donate. them up and donate mm -hmm. them to them. Mm -hmm. And then after that, hopefully, there's not much left. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess. Yeah, not. <laughs> yeah. So. So. Uh, you you mentioned a few of the activities that you have that draw in the community mm -hmm. and the idea I guess is to get the community to be aware of what's going on here to contribute in different ways if yeah. um, if I don't have a child and we'll talk about the children afterwards because I think that's your area yes Paul mm -hmm. if I'm if I just need to get away from home and I need a quiet place to work I'm welcome here as well? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have a lady here who works in the library every day. She lives in the eastern end of, mm -hmm. uh, of our area and she comes here every day and sits at one of the tables and works. She's a full-time, she works off the internet and she works here full-time. And it's a nice quiet area. We have a couple of uh, an older gentleman and his wife who come in every single day to use our internet mm -hmm. and we have activities for adults as well. We have a book club for them that mm -hmm. just recently started. And we just got news that we're going to be having a photography club as well. A lady wants to do That's photography exciting. classes. Mm -hmm. She's new to the area, but she's recently moved to this area. She wants to offer them for free. So we're going to partner up with her and do some photography classes here. Isn't that wonderful? I'm really happy about that. Oh, yeah, it's a wonderful news. And how do oh, people absolutely. find out about all of these activities? We I have... won't even ask how you keep track. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good memory, thank God. <laughs> thank goodness. But um, no, we're going to be, we put everything like this on our website and we put it on our Facebook page as well. All so right. we're trying to encourage people to use the website because yeah. we have a calendar on there that has everything on there. We also have, have you heard of Triple P, the parenting yeah. course? Yes. Mm -hmm. They are going to be offering those here as well. Yeah, oh, it's a more central area for people program. to come to. Mm -hmm. There's parking around here. There's no issues. People are in enjoying the idea. We want people to come here. It's, I mean, all of this is for everybody in our community, and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything to come borrow a book. Most of the programs don't cost anything. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's here for everybody to enjoy, and we are trying to get more programs. We are also getting a seniors discussion group started. So I'm really excited about that as yes. well. It's to go through the different phases of life, mm -hmm. and it's going to be held by a local gentleman who used to be a military chaplain. So he's going to deal on the spiritual as well as the intellectual aspects of growing and growing in age and growing in spirit. 
Where do you accommodate all these people? These are volunteers. Well, oh, no, accommodate? We have a meeting go? room. We have um, another room that during the day is the computer lab for the school, but at mm -hmm. night we're allowed to use this. Yeah, right. we, we have, it's quite a big space here actually. <laughs> so. Well, it is, it is. Yeah. And of course, when many of these talks are held, they're held in an auditorium of some sort, but the atmosphere there is just they're not smaller groups. Mm -hmm. These are smaller groups. Mm -hmm. um, the, I know the Triple P, they're aiming at about 12 to 20 people, they're mm -hmm. hoping for. That would be in, the, in, our, in our lab, we call it the lab. Mm -hmm. The other groups are aiming at about 10 or so people to start with. Okay. If it grows, then we'll have to move it to the lab. But for now, it's in our meeting room. Okay. And uh, it, it does work. It's a, okay. it, it takes time for these things to build up in any case, to get more and more people interested and get them to know about it. I can imagine that it takes time. And then when it takes off, then everybody has ideas. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. So although many of these activities are free, this place cannot be free. And you have salaries and you have expenses. Where do you get the money from? The money is majority from the municipality, mm -hmm. so it's everybody's taxes. Okay. It goes towards that. It is also from grants. We get a grant from the Ontario government. We get grants through for students for the summer, okay. through World Canada. What is it? Uh, well, the uh, Work Youth Canada program, which helps pay for some of the staff which we hire in the summer holidays. Okay. Without that, we couldn't ha hire these staff and run our programs. Mm -hmm. And these are government grants. Now, I, I will admit, some of it comes from fines. But <laughs> fines. So if people are late with their books, yes, we do use that money to buy new books. So uh, the book sale helps as well. Although normally the book sale and any events that we actually charge for, because a few of the events we have to charge for if it's got a bit of a... Uh, a bit of more like the wine and wine and chocolate we had to charge for that mm -hmm. but any money we make towards those we always put it into our summer program mm -hmm. so it all it's like a fundraiser more okay so money does come from here and there and we've been very lucky to have the support of our municipality we don't have a big city and with a huge no. amount of resources for young people for teens for seniors but this is their place. They can come here. Mm -hmm. They can feel at home here. They can spend the whole day here. Nobody's going to kick them out. Mm -hmm. This is a place to come and feel at home. But I suppose you must have some restrictions on how on young children being here on their own? Yes, there yes. are restrictions, age mm -hmm. restrictions. Of course, yes. you're not going to drop off a five-year-old. That would probably not go over too well. No. But we do have story time, so mm -hmm. they can come with their mommies or their daddies and enjoy mm -hmm. story time and a craft, and uh, there's always a craft, yes. <laughs> and songs. And, um, and then we're going to get back to Paul on that. That's right. Well, Miss <laughs> um, Nancy actually hosts the story times. Oh, okay. And in the summertime, she actually does it for the older kids, because story time is for preschool. And then in the summertime, we open it up for the kids who are already in school mm -hmm. so that they can enjoy stories and crafts in a little bit. And we also do stories in the park in the summertime. We do it every Friday afternoon in the summer. Stories in the park. Lovely. Yeah, just so across normally, the street. Just mm -hmm. across the street. So normally the kids who are at the splash pad, they see her sitting down and they come join her on their blanket and oh. listen to stories. So this is Nancy who? Nancy Bolduc. She's Nancy our Bolduc. programmer. Yeah. Okay. She's in charge of programming. Okay. Now, just to get back for a moment to the uh, fundraising you mentioned that. Yes. I think you have special fundraising activities you were mentioning to me when we were talking last time. We and do. That's do you want to hear about our most recent coming up? Yes. You do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let Paul talk so to you. that. <laughs> oh, yes. Everybody would like to hear about that one. But I'm going to let Paul talk to that one because it's very interesting. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Well, okay. Fundraising. Yeah, fundraising. We've uh, tried several, and the, the next one we're trying on uh, May 7th, it's a Thursday, uh, is Jail in the Library. And the, the biggest convict we have for that is, in fact, the mayor. Uh, he's okay. going to come over for half an hour. He'll be jailed in the library. He thinks that people are going to pay to get him out. <laughs> but we've been told he, they're paying to keep him in longer. So we're not sure how, what time he's getting out. But the jail's going to be big enough for two, so whoever else joins me in there can uh, have someone else to talk to. Okay. Now, this fundraising event is for our TD Summer Reading Club program, plus our other programs as well. And the idea is to try to make as much money as we can to offset this change in the Summer Reading Club program, which I've, uh, I've uh, organized. Mm -hmm. uh, the program is much bigger than before and much more expansive, and we're bringing in a lot of new things. Before, things didn't cost anything at all. And we did a lot of 
uh, do-it-yourself activities. We made them up, we got given free items, paint, uh, cloth, uh, cardboard, and we were able to do these things ourselves. But because it's a bigger program, we need to make it a bit more technical and a bit more appealing to everybody. So having extra funds would allow us to go buy things which we can use in, this, in the TD summer reading program, but also use afterwards uh, in, in the normal uh, library programs as well. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a big affair, the, uh, the summer reading program. Uh, last year we had 165 kids registered in it, and between them they read over 129,000 pages. That's so that astounding. Doesn't, it, and they it, got paid? Well, they, they didn't get paid, but they collected money for those pages that they read? Uh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 this no, wasn't no, 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 no. This wasn't no, like they, a readathon. No, it's, no. it's slightly different to the readathon in that there, there's no money involved with this. It is an achievement for the kids themselves. Yeah, well, I'll say. Uh, we do reward them, though, and we did have some funds set aside for an iPad last year for the best reader, and uh, usually translated to someone in the older age group, but we're finding now that all the younger age groups are also re re wanting to be involved with this. So this year it's slightly different. Each age group, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, etc., will have a, a prize associated with each best reader in each age group. So a seven-year-old could win $75. Right. But that doesn't all happen here in the library. I, I guess they don't have to be sitting here in the library while they're reading those books. No, no not at all. No. No, they don't even need to use our books, but we encourage that. Okay. We'd like them to come into the library, obviously. Mm -hmm. We want to see our clients, mm -hmm. and we want to show them the new things we're creating every day. Mm -hmm. But they, they read at home. And if they read at home, they come and take our books, they use their own books. We trust them to come back and tell us how many pages they've read. And I'm going to count every single page yes. so that we know exactly what each kid has, has done, all the, the time they've spent doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, as we see, as Catherine said earlier, it improves their, their start-up knowledge at the start of the, uh, uh, the school term in September. This is a great benefit to them. Now, when they come back, they'll let me know how many pages they read, and we'll count them up right up until the finale, which this year is Thursday, the 20th of August. Mm -hmm. And the finale is a big party we have to celebrate, having a great summer with the Summer Reading Club. And this is where we give out the prizes to the best readers in each age group. But additional to that, there'll be other prizes. If someone comes and they write a poem, and they let us display it. If they write a story and let us display it. If they come and they actually make the book, they're going to write their story in, there's a prize for that. There are tickets for that. It's incentives to have the kids participate and join in and make a contribution to the Summer Reading Club. So it's not just coming here for reading and coming here for the fun activities. They will be part of our library. Very proactive. They, they provide their own input. They write their poems, they write their books. And you mentioned something also about publishing their books? That's right. We're looking for someone to publish it or a program mm -hmm. that will publish the books. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, if a kid writes a book, writes a story and makes a book, we put it on the shelf for people to look at. We'll ask for people's comments on the book. And from that, we can deduce which was a very good book. And then we can say to someone uh, who would be willing to uh, sponsor that, will you pay to publish this book for this child? Mm -hmm. And we'll keep copies in our library and other libraries throughout Canada can buy copies of this. So it starts a child off on, on a, um, a future of proactive writing, mm -hmm. of thinking about what they want to put down on paper. And if they, if they have some books published with that, if they get a little notoriety, without them being showing off, but uh, obviously to, to the positive side of their life, then we can see that this child will come back next year and be even more involved in our library, mm -hmm. to, the, to the point where we're actually encouraging members of our library to come back and help us run our summer reading club program so that we, they stay involved the whole time. Now those activities that uh, the children are doing today with the arts, arts and crafts, I mm. guess you would call it. Are those activities that go on regularly and are they meant to get the kids to get to know each other so that they can take part in these things? How, do, how does that kind of activity fit into the mandate of a library? Well, it, it, our library is different to other libraries. Mm -hmm. uh, we like to be noisy in the summer reading club time. <laughs> and even, even outside that, it's noisy. The kids zone down this end of the library is quite a lively place. And we, we don't... It is totally lovely. I, I don't know who designed it, but it's, <laughs> I would live there. Well, it's got those big windows. It, it invites the sunlight in. Mm -hmm. And we use the windows actually to decorate, to actually make the place look different, for, mm -hmm. depending on what theme we're using. 
And each week we have a different theme with the Summer Reading Club program. So the kids turn up on Monday morning and there could be something new in the window, there could be a new structure, there could be new decorations, and that's the theme for the week. Uh, and, and we work along those themes just to keep the kids interested. Um, but besides that, even we have the kids contribute to that. This year they'll be making uh, collage faces to stick on the windows with their name on it. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of the year, when we give them back, we know who it belongs to. But we want them to help decorate the, the library. Uh, paintings they do, pictures they do, uh, poems and stories they write will be displayed. and will display prominently so that we can actually have people, even the older generation who come to use the library, can actually see what the future generations are contributing to our community. It's, it's always good to have that interaction between the generations. Well, we, we have seniors who come here and volunteer to help with our kids' program. Uh, recently, we had a readathon. Mm -hmm. We had three seniors come up to help with the organization of that, and they sat at a table for two and a half hours to take registrations specifically for the Summer Reading Club. They don't have any grandchildren here in the library. Mm -hmm. They use it for themselves, but mm -hmm. they wanted to help out with this very worthwhile program. The, the programs that you're doing with with the children, the summer programs, are they like a summer camp that the children sign up for a week or two or they just show up every morning if they want to take part? Hmm. Well, we, we have the children registered into the Summer Reading Club program. Okay. We need the registrations for stats, uh, just to prove to the different towns within our municipality, <coughs> excuse me, how many kids from that municipality are using our library. And also, it also helps us decide where we put our funding, where we put our emphasis mm -hmm. for, for our library activities. Um, to register like a, a normal summer camp, it's not quite like that. They decide when they come in, they read our, uh, our, our calendar of events and decide what they would like to do. Mm -hmm. And the parents can actually uh, sign up one week in advance. Our summer reading club program isn't quite the same as a normal summer camp uh, as you would have uh, in other organizations. The parents sign up the kids and the parents decide with the kids what activities they like to come to. And this is why we lay on so many activities during the day. They could come to an activity in the morning, Parents could go upstairs to the YMCA and take a swim or a relax, come back and see the child for 10 or 15 minutes in the break between the activities, leave the child with us again and we do a different activity with them. And again, the parent goes back to the Y or the, the press cafe, just relax within our setup here. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't have them all day as such, but there are blocks of 75 minutes which they can stay with us. And, and have to register for each block. Yes, that's right, yes. They have yeah. to register for each yes. block. Yes, yeah. Okay. But it's the same as going to the Y and registering for the swimming class, the, the sports class, the fitness class. Mm -hmm. It's just a registration. costs nothing. And all we ask them to do is to come mm -hmm. when they have registered or let us know if they don't turn up mm -hmm. because we'll invariably have a line of people who want to come take that place. Mm -hmm. It'll be so popular. And who looks after the kids while they're here? Well, I have a staff. Uh, this year I'm hiring three animators. Mm -hmm. uh, these are college, university, high school grade uh, young people. Uh, they'll go through a job uh, selection process. Uh, they'll do some leadership training with me. And then these guys will have a, a team of assistants who are in fact junior high school students from Lescal, from uh, uh, Gisela Lalonde. And these, these are uh, young people who've come again into this leadership program to learn some skills, to ready them for taking these uh, uh, TD Reading Club members on, on different activities. So really we are using our community within the library mm -hmm. to develop the community, to develop our future uh, young library users. Getting to know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm afraid we won't do any singing classes, not yet, anyway. Yeah. Not, 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 yet. not yet, no. <laughs> Next year, possibly. I'll sign up when you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to take a break right now, and we'll come back with a little bit more chit chat and information about the library, and then we'll be moving on to some filming, so showing you a little bit of the kids' activities, which I'm sure are not the kinds that you've expected of kids in libraries, <laughs> but certainly attract them here, and then it's just a matter of reaching out and grabbing a book off the shelf and doing it the way we're all accustomed to. We'll be right back. Informez-vous avec Jacques est une émission d'intérêt public à but non lucratif qui couvre tout ce qui se passe dans notre belle région de Clarence Rockland. Animé par Jacques Tessier, sur place, il assemble entrevues avec des moments cocasses sur les organisations et événements qui se déroulent durant l'année. 
Jacques s'intéresse à vous et est là pour vous informer de ce qui se passe chez vous. Informez-vous avec Jacques à TVC22 ou sur Internet à www.tvc22.ca. Oh, c'est moi qui l'a. Euh... Oh, non. Oh, 71. Oh, 71. Hey, si tu jouerais, ça irait bien mieux. Ouais. Je sais pas compter. Ouais. I30. Bingo! 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 Oh, 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 <rire> bingo! 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 Le TV Bingo, en direct du studio TVC22, tous les dimanches, 19h15, sur TVC22 ou sur Internet au www.tvc22.ca. So here we are back again, after that break, to talk a little bit about the administrative side of running a library like this. And although it might sound dry, it's actually quite a fascinating story and not exactly what you would expect. We don't have librarians per se, we have a library technician. And the rest of the staff kind of grew into the job. Katrina, Hi. tell me how you ended up being the CEO of this place. Well, it's a very simple story. I have always grown up on libraries. I'll tell you a little more about that. I moved around a lot as a child, mm -hmm. 17 times. Ouch. But guess what I looked for every time we moved? The library. The library. <laughs> This is my home away from home. Makes so sense. when I moved to Rockland, I was a stay-at-home mom at the time. Mm -hmm. I already had my degree and I had a career in property management. And I decided to look at the ads for a job opening at the library until it came. Mm -hmm. And I said to my husband, I'm ready to go back. Mm -hmm. And I got the job at the library working at the three of our small branches. And from there, I got another job working as the one who orders the books. Mm -hmm. And when my predecessor fell ill, I took over for him. And so you're, you were just free to go with your imagination because there was no formal training in what was expected of a librarian. Well, funny enough, free, no formal training for librarian. However, I did take a lot of courses in how to manage a small library. I had already started that back mm -hmm. when I was ordering the books. Mm -hmm. and. It's been immensely helpful. It's through the Southern Ontario Library Service, who are also supporters of all the small libraries in Ontario. Mm -hmm. And they support us immensely. Mm -hmm. And I've been taking a certificate course through them mm -hmm. in small library management. So there's that course, there's your background, there's your passion, and then there's also this board that helps you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be here without the library board. They mm -hmm. have had... They have been so supportive of me and all of my endeavors for the past year and a half. Every library, save for a, a couple of exceptions, has a library board according to the Libraries Act, the Public Libraries Act of Canada. Mm -hmm. Or is it on? Public Libraries Act of Ontario. Okay. We'll check and we'll change that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and each library has a library board that consists of some members of the municipality. Mm -hmm. So we have two council members, which are Krista Simao and Diane Chouignard, mm -hmm. and we have three members of the community. And these are Sylvie Archambault is our president, mm -hmm. Mike Moscow and Louise Elsir are two of our community members. Now we are looking for two other community members, so we do look for people who are passionate about the library, such as we are and the rest of our members are. Mm -hmm. And yeah. how many times do you meet? Once a month. Once a month. Once a month. And they do tend to come to all of our events. Mm -hmm. Not all at once, necessarily all five of them don't come, but we do get a good showing of the board support through all our right. events. So that's volunteer work. It is. And volunteer work is often what starts you on a job here, such as Paul's story. It certainly does. Let me tell you a little story about a man named Paul Davies. <laughs> He and his wife and his small family of two children, moved to town and decided to come to the library. Mm -hmm. And they never left. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <sighs> Paul has spent more volunteer hours with us than some full-time staff during the summers. He has been so dedicated to our summer program, as well as other events throughout the year, that when it came time to re-jig our summer reading program, there was only one guy I could talk to. Okay. And to tell you the honest truth, the other volunteer in the family is also an employee here. 
Sonia was hired last year as well as an occasional employee, and now she's a part-time part -time, uh, circulation. Oh, and that's why your son Benoit is so comfortable here in the library, because he's uh, spent so much time, he's spent so much yeah. time here. Yes. Yes. He was very helpful with the, uh, <laughs> with the interviews with the kids. Benoit is my unofficial assistant. He's yes. the assistant to the CEO, that's what we like to say. <laughs> and uh, all of our kids are here all the time. They have a great time. Our library technician, who actually is our cataloger, her son goes to L'Escal. He comes down here after school and waits for her to go home. My children walk from school and they wait for me and they even get their tutoring done here. Oh. And it, it is a living room. We, it is a living room. And this is where we want our family members to be. We want our family members to be here too. So we want all of you to bring all of your family members here. Well, Absolutely. Why you? Why Absolutely. You? And then when you're when you need to move around a little bit, then you go upstairs to the Y and you do shake, shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> shake out those cobwebs. Shake it off. <laughs> so, Paul, um, this obviously the two of you share this passion of being so comfortable in libraries. That's the place. That was your go-to place as you were growing up. This was your probably not your first experience with the library. What's it, your story? Well, do you know, Caitlin? Uh, I'm not a big library goer. I never used to be. Uh -huh. Uh, but coming here to this library opened my eyes a lot, as it will do to other people when they come here for the first time. It, it's a brand new experience. Uh, when we walked in, we, we did like what we saw. And the more we looked, the more we liked. And then we realized that this is a little gem in our community. And we have to be part of it. Uh, we got involved uh, in 2010, uh, two, sorry, 2012 with the Summer Reading Club. And it started there. Uh, we joined in with the games, we supplied games, we helped out with activities, uh, we helped out with the finale, we were waiting for the next year's Summer Reading Club to be involved. Uh, and when I became involved with that one, just to do the scenery, I, it became a full-time job. I was here 8 in the morning through to late at night, building scenery, uh, pyramids, sphinx. Out of cardboard. Mazes. Out of cardboard, yes. Mazes. He built mazes. Mazes. The maze, yes, yeah, we got this. Cardboard. Every, every activity we do when we have a maze, it is a big lineup for the kids. They go straight to the maze and they spend all night in the maze. Whether it's Halloween or it's our finale or our uh, whatever the event is. Uh, in fact, the cardboard comes from pot van construction. They donate it to us as oh. instead of them recycling it, they give it to us, we use it and then we recycle it. But we turn it into fantastic decorations. Uh, castles. castles. Castles, yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. We can do anything with cardboard here. In fact, we have a structure in the window for our next fundraiser. I'm asking people to tell me what it is. I keep adding to it. I'm trying to slow down my production of it, but it's all made out of cardboard. If someone can guess what it is, I'll give them a prize. We have to take a picture of that and show it. Yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult one. When you look at it, you will never guess what it is. Wow, that's yeah, a challenge. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But this, uh, this library that we have here has been tremendous for us. Yeah. Our kids are growing up in, into it. We see that their reading took off. As soon as we got involved with the Summer Reading Club, it was like an inspiration to the kids. And my daughter Joelle and my son Benoit, they, they don't put the books down. Their, their head is in a book all the time. Uh, Joelle, she takes on three or four books a week and go through them all and they're back and, and then another three or four taken out. This has been really for us uh, an inspiration for, uh, for our kids. This is why Sonia and I loved volunteering here. This is why we like to work here. No, not like is the wrong word, it's love again. You know, this is a great place to work and to be in. It's, tr it's a tremendous inspiration for anybody's family. Can I mention one other item? Yes. When I started as CEO here, mm -hmm. when I, it became official, I was acting for a while and then it became official, I sat my staff down together and I said, I have a plan. It's a very simple plan. I want this to be a happy place. Oh. And it seems overly simplistic, mm -hmm. but why? Why not? No. I want it to be a happy place where people can come and have a good time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be going out of town to try to go to the movie theater down in Ottawa or what have you. You can have I fun so right here. I'm so happy to hear you say that. That is yes. absolutely true. This is our happy place. Clarence Rockland's happy place is our libraries. This is an extraordinary building yeah. to begin with and what you've done with the inside of it certainly reflects that. It's, yeah. That's, that's quite a, a vision. 
Yeah. Happiness is not something to be taken for granted, not something to come by. And it's, yeah. Easily, you have to put an effort into it, but you provide the structure, the framework here that yeah. automatically takes you there. I mean, even this beautiful touch of the fireplace, I don't know who came up with that, but it completely adds to the sense of yeah. safe. Yeah. Safe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to be here in the fall, when we, when we do the fall activities mm -hmm. and the fire is running, we have the wreath above there uh, at Christmas time uh, mm -hmm. with the decorations. It's, it's like a big living room. Mm -hmm. Every time we decorate it to be it like, like someone's house. Mm -hmm. uh, Halloween isn't scary, it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's always like that. And we have the maze at Halloween as well. Mm -hmm. But we are so full of kids here and families. Uh, when we when we set up an activity, everybody loves to come here, and, and a lot of these people don't use the uh, library on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but they do look forward to our activities, and, in, and we enjoy inviting them in. It's uh, well, I dare say, boss, that we live on uh, on the inspiration they give us. I know I do. Well said. That's exactly the way it works. Yes. In any kind yes. of community, yeah. we yeah. we nourish and we nourish off each other, mm -hmm. feed off each other. Now you're staff has grown considerably you were mentioning <laughs> well a lot of happy people in town <laughs> it, well uh, quite a few um when i started i think there were about seven people and now we're up to 14 staff members we have two that take care of the branches mm -hmm. we've got these branches are we've mm -hmm. got a branch in bullshit which mm -hmm. has quite a it's open four days a week mm -hmm. not full days but we do have four Good, uh, good blocks of time there. We've got one day a week each in Hammond, St. Pascal, and Clarence Creek. Just two hours each, but those are smaller branches. But where are they located? In the schools. In those the schools. are located okay. in the schools, except for Bourget has its own little building just behind the church that's in Bourget. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's just behind the church. The church actually built that for the library many, many moons ago. Yeah, There's it's been quite a long spectacular. History, I think of churches and libraries taking and care once of upon their people. Time, yeah. Yeah. Yes, and once upon yeah. a time it was the domain of the monks working in those yeah. dark cellars. And Do you know we got a story? Um, I believe you know our local Santa Claus. Yes. yes. When the church first opened the library in its basement. His big sister used to go around with a little red wagon from door to door and ask if anybody had books to donate to the public library. Isn't that cute? <laughs> that's how it started. <laughs> yes, that's how it started. People were donating books to the public library. Well, everybody's got books that they want to share, and I guess that's the only problem with e-books is that you can't share them. Well, we can. Oh, but you can't. All we right. can. I stand corrected. We have, we have Overdrive and we have Archambault, which offer English e-books and French e-books. Mm -hmm. And you can borrow them just like you borrow any other book. And if they're not available, you go on a waiting list, they let you know when it's available. Easy as that. Easy as that. All right. <laughs> you never say never Surprise, heard. surprise, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's obviously a place that was born of inspiration and is going to keep inspiring people. I think so. And I don't think you guys are going to be running out of energy anytime soon. If <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Judging from the number of people who are streaming in saying yeah. I want to be part of that. That's right. I congratulate you both. Thank you. I thank you both. And I think that hopefully viewers are going to pick up on everything that this place represents and everything that it promises and how much it's a reflection of the community of Clarence Rockland, which is still, still retains so much of that closeness and entre gens. Small town feel. Small town feel. Yeah. And this is, this is one of the best places where you can come and get to meet people and expand your mind. So Katrina and Paul, thank you very much. I'm so sorry that Nancy couldn't be here with us today, but I'm sure that people who come in here will get to know Nancy, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it for now. We're going to show you some of the activities that the children have been doing today. And then we leave it up to you to figure out exactly what that structure is in the window at the front and to come in and explore all the other things that the library has to offer. See you next time. Le GF Show, c'est quoi? Bienvenue au GF Show, c'est un tout nouveau TV 
show on m'a dit Ah ouais, voici, let's go Je sais pas si vous allez me trouver pas Bienvenue tout le monde au GS Show C'est un tout nouveau TV show Vous allez voir, je suis pas que numéro On va avoir du fun, mon welcome le GF Show, c'est de l'humour, de l'entretien, du divertissement, des sketchs, des parodies, des conneries, des observations et des chroniques et j'en passe. Le GF Show, c'est tout, c'est n'importe quoi. C'est pour vous autres, c'était le Sénat 2 c'est chaud. Ne le manquez pas. Mesdames et messieurs, bienvenue au GF Show. La paroisse Très Sainte Trinité est heureuse de vous accueillir à la messe dominicale du dimanche à l'église Très Sainte Trinité de Rockland. Avec l'abbé Albert, vivez avec nous dans le confort de votre maison la célébration du Seigneur avec lecture, évangile, chant, eucharistie et bénédiction. La messe dominicale à l'église Très Sainte Trinité à TVC22 ou encore sur internet à www.tvc22.ca. This group of children are here today to show you an example of what we do in the TD Summer Reading Club program in July and August. They're all from schools within Rockland and they come here today just to show you some of the examples of activities that we do. Now the TD Summer Reading Club is designed so that these kids have a lot of fun in the summer but they also include a lot of reading into their activities. And part of the program is that these These great uh, club members will improve their reading, they can win prizes and get to take part in lots of different activities. Uh, some of the activities they'll be doing besides arts and craft like this is they'll be doing uh, geology, we'll be doing puppet theatre, they'll be becoming pen pals with other libraries and by doing this they'll earn themselves extra, extra points which we can actually translate into prizes at the finale in August. Now the club will start on the 29th of June with the launch which will be just outside the library here and at the launch we'll have a fire truck, we'll have a bouncing castle, lots of fun and games and it's a day where everybody gets wet and dirty and as an introduction to our summer reading club. The club proper starts the next day and then we continue through to the end of August where on the 20th of August we have the finale and the finale will take place across the road here in the Jean-Marc Lalonde Arena. And in the arena, again, we'll have lots of fun and games, and kids will then, at that time, be awarded their prizes, which could be money, it could be gift certificates, but for all the work they've done during the uh, Summer Reading Club program, that's where they'll end up with their prizes. Now here we can go around and look at the group and see some of the activities that they're doing, and as I said, these are examples of what we do. We do much more than this. I'll hand the microphone over to my son Benoit and he'll go around and introduce you to all the fantastic kids we have in the club. Thanks Benoit. You're welcome. What is your name? Charlene. What school do you go to? Lescal. How old are you? I'm 12. Hi. What is your name? Lance. How old are you? 10. What school do you go to? Calfels and S. What is your name? Lara. How old are you? Ten. What school do you go to? St. Patrick. What's your name? Okay. What Kira. What school do you go to? Carrefour Jeunesse. How old are you? Six. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Samuel. What school do you go to? Sacré Coeur. And how old are you? J'ai huit ans. What's your name? Ashka. How old are you? <laughs> Five? What school do you go to? Chardin. What is your name? Joel. What school do you go to? Uh, Giselle Alon. And how old are you? I'm 13. What is your name? Rosalie. <laughs> how old are you? Seven. What school do you go to? Saint Trinity. Hi. What is your name? Jared. How old are you? Nine. What school do you go to? Brooklyn Public School. Hi. What's your name? Cassandra. How old are you? I'm 13. What school do you go to? I go to Plantagenet. Hi, what is your name? Mia. How old are you? Um, I'm eight. What school do you go to? St. Pat's. Hi, what is your name? Ludmilis. How old are you? I'm 15. What school do you go to? I go to Lescan. What's your name? Katarina. Okay, how old are you? Seven. What school do you go to? St. Pat's. Thank you. 
So this is not your typical library, certainly not the kind that most of us are accustomed to. This looks like a whole lot of fun. Bright, lively, certainly not quiet, but then kids these days function with a lot of noise and they seem to thrive on all of the attention. Well done, guys. Have fun. Well, here we are. This is week five of our leadership and team building program at the library. We've learned quite a lot of things. We, we do our usual theory aspect, but then we go into our team building game or a leadership game where you actually put what we learn on paper into practice. Now, tonight I want to talk about planning because at the weekend I did an activity with you and really I didn't plan it all that well. So I have to admit to that. Now, to be a good leader, you have to be able to do that. If you say, well, I'm the leader, I'm right all the time, you in fact will be wrong because the leader doesn't know everything. The leader really is there as a director to say, well, Jessica, tell me what you know. Raphael, you're good at that. Show us how you do that. Cassandra, you're going to be a teacher. So tell us about some leadership aspects you'll use in the classroom. And you've got experiences which I don't have. And that's the idea of this. I bring those out of you and I guide you in a certain way so that when we do the TD Summer Reading, Reading Club program in the summer, you guys have really worked on your team building and your leadership skills. And when you go in front of a group, you know how to present yourself, you know what to say, you know what to expect from them, and you know how to present yourself to enthuse them so that they're, they're really enjoying what they're going to be doing. How many times when you've been wrong do you actually go, well, actually, it's my fault. How many? Multiple times. Sometimes. Joel? It's getting less and less these days because she's always right. <laughs> yes? Yeah, yeah. Always. Anthony? Uh, <laughs> when I'm wrong, I'm either fixing the problem before it's really a, a problem or immediately apologizing because I've done stuff. Right, right. Uh, Raphael? Uh, well, I'm just trying to like be like sneaky, like this pass it on to like... <laughs> <laughs> right, my son Benoit is the same. I can never get him to pin down to say, sorry dad, I was wrong. If I say to Benoit, okay Benoit, what, did you do that? I, uh, I may have, I may have. Well, Dad, really, uh, I, 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 and he never goes there to that. Stacy, would you admit to being wrong? Yeah. No matter the consequences? <laughs> <laughs> Depends what the consequences are. Celeste? I'm always right, so. Ah, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> it's great, <coughs> excuse me, it's great you've got self-confidence, but you're not boasting, are you? No. Someone who boasts will just throw it out there. But you know when they're talking, you know if you, if you know them, that really they have no substance inside them. Yeah, they're just all front. And it's like a shop window. You, you take the, the, the mannequins out of the shop window, and then you look in the shop. And what's, it, what's in there? It's all glitter, glittery in the front, but when you move the mannequins, there's just a pile of boxes, which the dresses the mannequins are wearing are just piled on the floor. So window dressing in the leader is something you can't afford to do. You, you, have, to, you have to be up front. <coughs> Right, we, we talked about plans and goals, but we did say there was a difference there, didn't we? What, what was the difference? Uh, Cassandra, what, what's a plan? Plan is something like you, you need to do before. It's not like your goal is what you want to uh, like, uh, get. Uh, achieve? Yes, achieve. Achieve, right, good word, yes. And when you're planning, you just want it. It's helping you get forward to your goal. To reach the goal, yeah? So the plan or plans to reach the goal. The goal being, what, what did we have last week? Oh yes, you were going to eat all that lobster, weren't you, at the, at the, at the store there. Uh, the plan was to go to that restaurant, but the goal was to eat all the lobster they had there. Basic plans, who, where, what, when, how, yeah. Have you started to use this stuff, by the way? Charlene, tell us how you've been using who, what, where, when, how. Uh, uh, like in stories or 
something like that. In, yeah, in stories, you have who, right? All the things like that, yeah. but like really explain. Okay, so this this is making up a composition or a story, yeah. and you use these these keywords to actually develop the story. Like in French, I'm doing a story and I'm using those. Okay, great. Anthony, you want to answer that one? Uh, I, at school, have been given a lot of responsibilities and I often have to plan ahead, you know, make myself a little lesson plan of activities and stuff like for the seven eights. Like I'm in grade 10 and mm -hmm. I have some teachers that approach me and ask me to go help the seven eights understand the concept of improv, you know, the, the theater. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have to go research some games and activities I think they'll be into because I don't know where they're at, where they were at yet. I just got there. I haven't met any of them or nothing. So I had them into that. I had to make a lesson plan towards it, um, and I had to have some backup too. And I also didn't know how long I'd be doing it. Hmm. Let's look at that a minute. Do you, you hear what he said? <coughs> I had to have some backup, and I didn't know how long. Resources is the backup the time. He didn't know them very well and he had to set some priorities. So all the things he was saying there, he used the, the not the cool words like I use because I'm, I'm, the, I'm the teacher of this stuff so I use the big words like priority. But it's okay. It's all, it's all the same language. Okay, Whether you use the language like this or some other term which means the same thing, it doesn't matter. You, this, this goes to prove you have in you what I'm writing down here and developing, trying to develop inside you. So, if you have to make a plan for something, uh, it could be something simple, it could be something complicated, but they always follow the same direction, the same basic building blocks. And something complicated in a plan could be just a lot of steps instead of three or four steps. Although you might write down who, what, where, when, and how, for a composition, you might take one part of that paragraph of the composition and then rewrite this again. In that paragraph, I want to explain who, what, where, when, and how. So you're actually expanding the information you have in a particular part of your planning. This is now a race. I've divided, I divided the team into two teams. This is team one, this is team two. Team one, you have to beat team two down to the bucket. Team two, you have to beat team one. Let me just warn you, your teamwork will start to, effectiveness will start to drop because we've introduced the element of competition. competition. Okay, you still have to maintain your composure. Okay, you have to think about it. And you may not, you may not interfere, you may not interfere with the opposing team. The first team to come down near the uh, container has the priority. I'm not going to ask you, Anthony. I'm ready to go. No three, cheating, no three, 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 two, one, go. Alright, go, go, go. Okay, guys, watch out. Store, 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 store. Oh! Okay, okay. Watch out, watch out. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, Quickly, give me the ball. Yeah. Here we go, ready? ready? Here we go, here we go, ready, ready, ready. Off we go. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Remember what happened last time. Sorry about this. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Is it <laughs> okay. I've been here a short time, but I think it is quite useful. These skills we are learning are definitely not just in the faint of heart. We are using these throughout our lives, throughout our school, work, and our futures. These can help us throughout many different situations, and I didn't know I was using them my entire life. Paul's pretty good at pointing out things to you. Paul is the best. <laughs> euh, moi, je m'appelle Ludmi et je travaille au Y avec les enfants. Et j'ai dû suivre un cours comme ça, mais c'était pas aussi amusant que ça. Comme Paul, il utilise des activités, il utilise plein de choses pour vraiment sensibiliser les jeunes à vouloir participer à ce programme à chaque jour. 
euh, dans le programme que moi j'étais, c'était on devrait regarder une vidéo sur YouTube de 40 heures, puis on était resté assis là, puis on était vraiment, vraiment plat. Mais avec Paul, il fait sûr que on, est vrai, on a vraiment envie de venir à chaque euh, semaine. Ah, oui, oh, c'est magnifique, Ludmi, merci. Paul Davies is my daddy. Um, it's really cool that he's running a program, but sometimes it's like weird because I am in a room and my dad is now my teacher. Did you know what I mean? But he's always interesting and um, I find it really cool that I get to do something else than just like stay at home with him. So I found this really cool. Okay, so I've been in this program for five weeks now um, with all these amazing people. It's a, leader, it's a leadership <laughs> camp and uh, what we do is that we do hands-on activities for uh, skills like plan making that we just learned today um, and uh, leadership stuff. So. C'est quel âge as-tu? Uh, 13 ans. Tu as 13 ans? Et puis tu as fait, tu fais ce programme depuis? Uh, comme les autres. Cinq, cinq semaines? Cinq. Oui. Alors, et qu'est-ce qui t'a attiré à ce programme? Ben, Paul est venu me chercher dans la rue. <rire> Il est venu te chercher dans la rue? Et <rire> <rire> hey, toi, t'as l'air d'être bonne pour le groupe. <rire> oui? Ben, et pense. tu as appris des choses? Oui. Oui, c'est bien. Tu recommanderais ça en, en particulier à qui, par exemple? Ben, Vers l'âge comme 10 ans. Là. Oui. C'est l'âge où tu veux faire des choses. Puis, comme, tu... Et pour apprendre quoi Quelle sorte de choses penses-tu Ben, peut-être comme on nous apprend des activités de leadership et s'entendre avec les autres. Là. Oui, oui, oui. Ok. Et puis qu'est-ce que tu espères apprendre tu, ça, ça continue pendant combien de temps encore euh, Je ne sais pas. Mais je sais pas. Je pense que ça continue encore longtemps. C'est fun. Puis... Bah, tant mieux. Tant mieux. So, Charlene, how long have you been in the program? Um, only five years. Five years? Five weeks. Yeah. Five weeks? In our, in, in our leadership program, five oh, weeks. Oh, five weeks. Yeah. Okay. Tu préfères parler français? Oh, no? Okay. Oui. No, okay. All right. Um, I, it's the first time that, w that I'm in a leader program, and it's really fun, but if I go in the other one, I think it will be more boring because Paul will not be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have to agree with you. I think this is the best one Paul I've ever seen. He's a great man. And <laughs> it's like, he's like my second family. Oh, oui, c'est pas le pire. N44. Ah, il t'a gagné, là. Appelle Dan. Ah, oui. Non, ça, c'est celui qui a gagné de l'heure. Mais tu l'aimes. Mais ouais, bingo. Ben là, parce qu'on joue avec les cartes, tu gagnes, puis tu ne le dis pas. Je ne veux même pas jouer. Ah, ouais. Ah, le coach en ligne, c'est ça. Ben. Le TV Bingo, en direct du studio TVC22, tous les dimanches 19h15 sur TVC22 ou sur Internet au www.tvc22.ca. The Clarence Rockland Town Council Assembly Plenary Meetings are there to inform you on all items submitted for approval, such as zoning, development, taxes and laws, discussions, debates, confrontations. Mayor Guy Desjardins and his councillors are there to inform you on subjects that affect you. Don't miss the Town Council Assembly Plenary Meetings on TVC22 or on the internet at www.tvc22.ca.